Hello, Vincent, can you hear me? Yes, you can.
Hello, I'm Greg Foote, science broadcaster, YouTuber and podcaster, and welcome to OneWeb's 10th launch. This evening we're bringing you the next stage in OneWeb's inspiring mission to create a world connected as one. And it feels like we have really shifted a gear with the speed of the mission really stepping up. OneWeb has already launched 288 of their small smart satellites and they're up there right now in low Earth orbit around 1,200 kilometres above us. And there's enough of them now for the team to start performance testing the network ahead of the introduction of service for customers later this year. If you've been following OneWeb's progress to date, you know that its first service will benefit customers in latitudes above 50 degrees north, otherwise known as the 50th parallel. Customers in Alaska, USA, Canada, Greenland, Northern Europe, Finland, the United Kingdom, Iceland, and the Arctic Seas. And that is a great example of what OneWeb will do best. Provide high-speed satellite broadband to communities and territories in places where it would simply be impossible to do so with ground-based fibre networks. To find out a little bit more about that, I'd like to bring in OneWeb's Vice President for Space Infrastructure, Maurizio Venotti. Maurizio, hello. Welcome to the live launch show. Hi, Greg. Tell us a little bit more then about where all of this is heading. So our aim is global coverage by the end of 2022. That means access to uh, ultra-fast internet with low latency anywhere in the world, whether in mid-air or in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, I can immediately see how I'd find that pretty handy myself. But who are the main customers then for that sort of data access? For that kind of connectivity you need for all types of users, from accessing the cloud to video conferencing to gaming and live streaming football matches. But it's also a game changer for governments, local communities, enterprise and NGOs who need reliable communications to meet critical needs during emergencies. The case for satellite connectivity to provide pop-up reliable high-speed communications on demand is especially strong in areas of disaster recovery and search and rescue or in support of scientific organizations, businesses, maritime and aviation industries, and even armed forces operating in remote areas. Now, OneWeb began putting their smart, compact satellites into low Earth orbit just two years ago, and none of what's happened so far would have been possible without the support and expertise of Ariane Spass. Their team provides the Soyuz rocket that carries the OneWeb satellites into space. And they'll be monitoring this launch every step of the way from their HQ in France. Now, before liftoff in around seven minutes time, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to speak live with the CEO of Aran Space, uh, Stefan Israel, for an update on the mission. Good evening, Stefan. Good evening. Hello, good evening, uh, and welcome to, uh, oh, it's great to see you there in the headquarters in Paris. Um, are you well? We are here for the 10th OneWeb launch. Can you please give us a mission update? Yes, yeah, so we are here in our uh, remote uh, headquarters in Evry, in the Parisian area. And indeed, tonight, we are going to make the 10th launch for OneWeb. The liftoff will occur in a few minutes. The mission duration will be three hours and 45 minutes. You will have nine sequences of separation. Separation are about 450 kilometers, and then the satellites will go to their final orbit at more than 1,000 kilometers from Earth. So, is it fair to say it's business as usual tonight for you? It's never business as usual. It's a launch, and a launch is uh, always uh, something we are very focused on. So, not business as usual. And moreover, it's not business as usual because tonight we have magic number. It is the 10th launch for one web. It is a 60 Soyuz, which is operated by Ariane Space and Starsen. And after this launch, we will have deployed more than 1,000 satellites. In the satellite we are going to deploy today, there is a Xiviasat, which is the 1,000 satellite deployed by Ariane Space since the beginning of our operations 41 years ago. Gosh, well, launching over 1,000 satellites, that's an incredible achievement. Um, OneWeb is clearly in very experienced hands. Congratulations to you and the team um, for that, and also ahead of having, what, half the constellation in place for OneWeb. Um, and that can't happen without international cooperation, right? Yes, you're right to uh, highlight the fact that we will have deployed half of the constellation as well, 322 satellites. And yes, I want to thank all our partners. We have uh, teams... Uh, in, uh, in Europe and uh, in Baikonur and the teams of Ariane Space and Starsem, but we have for sure a great cooperation with Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, and all its industrial partners. We have Erkatse Progress, we have Tsenki, we have Glav Cosmos. This is really 
a team spirit and for sure uh, we do that uh, in full confidence with our customer one web and one web satellite so really team spirit tonight and uh, you've got two more launches as well on the way which i'm sure we're going to be watching in the future thank you so much for your time stefan it's really really appreciated thank you so just over four minutes now then. Uh, so let's go back to uh, Ariane Spass in France. We're going to welcome another launch expert. Uh, we're going to welcome on Ariane Spass's Advanced Studies Director, Vincent Bordel. Um, so Vincent is just getting himself ready. What can we see on the screen right now, uh, Maurizio? I think you're with us. So we have the uh, um, Soyuz rocket uh, on the launch pad. Uh, we are uh, just less than four minutes from launch uh, and uh, we have Vincent connected now. Over to you, Vincent. Vincent, hello. Great to see you. Um, is everything on schedule with you? Yeah. Uh, hi, Greg, and hello, everybody. So, so far, final ups in Baikonur are uh, running uh, as expected. So the Soyuz is ready for launch and we are very happy to be with you again uh, tonight for this new OneWeb uh, mission with Soyuz. Lovely to have you with us. Now, earlier this week, the Soyuz ST-35 rocket was rolled out into position on the launch pad. Uh, Vincent, I'd love it if you can talk us through that whole process. What did it involve? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the first combined operations have uh, consisted in the integration of the complete stack of uh, 34 OneWeb satellites on the, on the frigate upper stage. After uh, this uh, integration, the module has been uh, horizontally tilted in order to proceed with the encapsulation, that is to say, uh, the installation of the fairing. The complete upper composite has then been transferred by train to the, to the launcher integration building, uh, located near the, the launch area, where uh, it has been uh, integrated and finally prepared on top of the Soyuz 3 stage. So first, uh, integration on top of the Soyuz 3 stage, and then complete integration uh, of, the, of the launcher. Three days before the launch, uh, the complete launch vehicle has been transferred to the launch pad. An operation performed uh, historically in the morning and by train, as you can see uh, on, the, on the video. And once arrived uh, on the launch pad, uh, the launch vehicle has been slowly, vertically fitted and the launch pad platform uh, has been uh, safely uh, installed around the launcher. And uh, after completion of this installation, the launch pad operations uh, have then been uh, initiated with uh, line connection, setup, and, uh, and different verification. And the countdown and uh, the dress rehearsal have uh, finally been run uh, successfully at D minus two. Uh, that is to say, two days before the launch, uh, two days before uh, today. Blow my mind. It's, it's always fascinating to see that procedure. So um, thank you, Vincent, for talking us through every stage. Phenomenal footage. Uh, look, it's now one minute and 16 seconds to lift off. Uh, and we can see the pictures of the, of the rocket live. These pictures here on the left, there, it's, there it is on the launch pad in Baikonur. Uh, Vincent, what's happening right now? So um, the beginning of the, of the launch vehicle uh, final automatic sequence has been uh, initiated manually uh, five minutes before liftoff. So uh, an operation uh, called Kluchna start in Russian. So purging operations are as well ongoing. And on Fregat, the transfer has been done uh, onto the, the power, uh, power supply. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much uh, for all of that. Let's check back in then with Maurizio from OneWeb again. Maurizio, one thing I'd love to know, it's, it could be a bit of a bumpy ride up to low Earth orbit. How were the satellite packed safely inside the rocket? So hopefully not too bumpy, right? So we have a long journey ahead. The satellites, uh, as we'll explain later on, will be released in a predetermined sequence, but not all at once. Uh, then we'll, be drop, we'll drop them off at different locations. They will be released at an altitude of just 450 kilometers above the Earth. And once the satellite is released, its onboard computer wakes up and communicates with the team at our satellite operations center. I so, think, let's, oh, look let's at this. wait we're, for, for liftoff. We're about we to, uh, yeah, seconds. we're commencing wait. liftoff procedure. Ignition looks like it's about, this is so exciting to watch this. What are we seeing, Maurizio? So it's part of the launch sequence. We have lift off. We right have now. lift off. Successful lift off of the tenth 
one web launch. Look at that, incredible footage. So the engines have now been ignited, that thrust is increasing, you can see up it goes, what an amazing sight. And right now we have the boosters doing all the, the heavy lifting, so it's, it's, it's phenomenal, right? And, uh, You've, you've seen this many times before, Maurizio, but is this kind of still as exciting as exciting, ever? Exciting, exciting as ever. So is, uh, this is space travel, which is uh, still the edge of human endeavor. It never gets routine. And on top of the, that, you know, every launch that OneWeb completes, you know, pass another milestone for us. And it's always a tremendous team achievement. So great thank you to everyone at OneWeb. So right now we are seeing the boosters we were saying a few seconds ago, doing all the, the work, the heavy lifting, pushing us against the earth atmos uh, the, the, the gravity and uh, the, they're gonna burn out in just under two minutes. Now I should explain, uh, we're now seeing an animation there on the screen, uh, these, this isn't you know, a live camera, but how fast is the Soyuz rocket going, Maurizio, right now? So the rocket is constantly increasing its speed and right now the satellites are experi experiencing an acceleration of about 4G, wow. which is similar to riding an extreme wide knuckle roller coaster. So there's still a long way to go. Vincent, I think you're still with us. Are you receiving information from the rocket? So yes, Greg. So indeed, uh, we are getting information from the teams uh, in the CVI. So uh, the um, control visual in media in French. So it's a, it's a term coming from the the Ariane world. So this operational team is tracking the launcher and receives the telemetry data from it. So they can consequently confirm uh, when uh, when the major events of the flight uh, have occurred. Well, hopefully if we're on track, uh, we should get booster separation very, very soon. So, oh, we've just seen that on the animation. Can you confirm that for us, Vincent? That will probably happen in a few seconds for you. Yes, so we can confirm now that we have the separation of the booster. So uh, it is the turn of the second stage to, to, to continue the, the, the journey now. Fantastic. So we're now into the second stage. Um, those four boosters have split off from the central core. That marks the end of stage one, the start of stage two. Uh, Maurizio, what happens next? So right now, there are 34 OneWeb satellites that are sitting at the top of the Soyuz launcher. The fairing you know, is protecting them in the initial phase of the ascent. The fairing has several jobs. Most notably, it's protecting the satellites from severe conditions of the launch and the atmosphere. There is acoustic vibrations at liftoff and also friction when the launcher is flying through the dense part of the atmosphere at very high speed. At present altitude, shortly there will be no more um, need for the fairing, so we can actually jettison the fairing and if we were there we would see for the first time uh, our satellite. So the launcher would be liberating from any dead weight, that would be you know, the first time we would see the satellites. They are attached to a central dispenser in a configuration that resembles a corn kernel which maximizes the number of satellites inside the fairing itself. And we are shortly approaching the end of the second stage phase. We saw that corn kernel structure that you were talking about on that, uh, on that video earlier. They were so beautifully packed, you know, all 34 of them beautifully packed inside the fairing, that kind of white connector. Tell me a little bit about the satellites then. Um, what are the challenges in making them not only so small, but also making so many of them? Well. Uh, the production and, uh, uh, and the sheer scale of these operation is, is one of the main challenges. Uh, our um, uh, operation capabilities allow, thank you to uh, the joint venture we have with Airbus One Web Satellites, to actually assemble up to two satellites per day once all the elements, the equipment, are in-house. So it, this is a fantastic achievement that has never been you know, done before at this kind of scale. And uh, when we spoke to Stefan earlier, we heard about you know, the number of launches that they have done. Of course, the Soyuz rocket is a, is, a, is a reliable one. Can you tell us a little bit about using that? Maurizio, are you there? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, um, the, 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 the reliability of, uh, of the, 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 the Soyuz rocket is uh, one of the key reasons why we chose Ariane Pass uh, as, as a partner. This is a technology that uh, started launching uh, human in space in the 60s and uh, as now being part of uh, a continuous development. Uh, and thank you to Ariane Pass and Soyuz, now we're able to deploy our constellation. So we've just seen on the animation there, second stage separation. Uh, Vincent, how's it looking your end? Can you tell us about what we've seen on the animation and what's actually happening in real life? What's the, what's the information say? Yes, yeah, so we, we are now at the, 
at the schedule uh, second stage separation. So the second stage is now separated, um, and it is the turn of the of the third uh, of the third stage to 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 burn. So this third stage uh, is powered by uh, by one RD uh, 124 engine, uh, producing a thrust uh, of 30 tons. Yes. And it will burn uh, from uh, approximately uh, four minutes and, uh, and 30, 30 seconds. Okay, so we've got over four minutes of that burn to go then. So let's just take a breather. Let's have a little recap of everything that's happened so far and what is coming up next. The mission of the Soyuz started with the four booster phase for a, a duration of uh, two minutes approximately. And after their separation, uh, the second stage of the launcher, that is to say the, the core stage, uh, took, the, took the rain uh, during less than uh, three minutes, and the fairing uh, is then uh, jettisoned. A few seconds before uh, separation of the core stage, uh, the third stage uh, is ignited, and the central core is then uh, separated. Nine minutes and 22 seconds after liftoff, uh, the third stage is separated from the nose module. The nose module uh, includes the frigate upper stage, the dispenser, and of course the 34 OneWeb uh, satellite. Uh, the frigate upper stage mission uh, will start uh, with a first ignition of its main engine in order to reach uh, the intermediate transfer orbit, uh, followed by a long ballistic phase. And the second ignition will be performed for circularization and uh, injection of the, into the satellite separation orbit. The satellite separation uh, sequence will start uh, with uh, first uh, the separation of the two satellites integrated uh, on the top conical part of the dispenser, and then uh, successive separations of the 32 uh, OneWeb satellites integrated on the cylindrical part of the dispenser from the, from the top row to the bottom row and four satellites uh, at once. And as illustrated uh, on the 3D animation, it means that uh, nine separation events are necessary for the complete release of the 34 satellites. So between each separation event, uh, the sequence is identical. So 19 minutes, which consists in a series of uh, maneuvers. So firstly, uh, a tilting of the nose module, then a boost of the frigate attitude control system with a very small delta V uh, in order to ensure enough distance between satellites and then avoid any, any collision. After a new tilting of the nose model to the required orientation for the satellite separation, and the separation is ordered by the, the frigate upper stage, a smooth separation ensured by relaxation of specific springs. So at the end, so the end of this complex release sequence occurs a little bit less than uh, four hours after liftoff and the ninth uh, satellite separation. Thank you so much for that mission summary, Vincent. It's fascinating. Um, Maurizio, can you update us then on where we are with OneWeb's wider launch and deployment plan uh, to make this incredible constellation of satellites in low Earth orbit? Sure, with launch number eight, we welcome the connectivity to the North Pole, meaning that from June this year, we launch enough satellites to provide continuous connectivity anywhere in the world at latitudes higher than 50 degrees north. With today's launch, we'll have deployed 50% of our constellation. With a monthly launch cadence, we'll be able to provide continuous glo global coverage by the end of 2022. It's also important to highlight that we are in the process of deploying our ground network infrastructure, the key elements of which are the satellite access portals distributed in a network across the globe. In parallel, we are continuing the production and development of innovative user terminals, which will enable users to have access to ultra-fast, low-latency broadband. Phenomenal. Well, again, congratulations to you and the team for uh, pretty much hitting 50% of the constellation. Uh, Vincent, let's go back to you. Can you give us a mission update? I think we're about to have a third stage separation. It's about to happen on the animation. What's it looking like there? Yes, well, uh, yes. So the third stage is now separated, so it will be confirmed in few, in few seconds, in few minutes. And the frigate uh, upper stage is now getting ready to, to switch uh, on its uh, main engines. Uh, it's main engine and we will see uh, on, on the 3D animation. So this is the first step uh, of the frigate flight, so called the pre-burn phase for uh, 55 second duration. Uh, it's giving a, a, a quick burst of acceleration uh, to, to push uh, the, the, the fluids back uh, and the propellant back uh, in the tanks. 
like when you accelerate in a car, so you are pinged back uh, against the seat. So this is the first step of the, of the Fregat mission. Uh, this first ignition enables to, to, to inject the nose module into uh, an intermediate uh, transfer orbit, so it is an elliptical orbit. And the duration of this uh, first boost is just over uh, five minutes. So yes, we will be able to confirm this. Uh, oh, there it is on the animation. Just yeah. seen it happening. So yes, let us, let us have confirmation when you've heard that. Uh, Maurizio, what can we expect then after that frigate in, uh, ignition? Well, the next phase of the journey is about to start. Actually, it has just started. The frigate is really the smartest part of the rocket with its own brain and will execute a series of separations. This is like a school bus drop-off and it will uh, release four satellites per stop, apart from the first release, which is for two satellites, in a series of nine separations in total. And note that as our celestial bus has only one gear, and as after each drop-off it becomes slightly, li slightly lighter, the fragment will have to fire its engine for a shorter period of time after each separation. Once the satellites are released, the onboard computers will wake them up, and the team at the Satellite Operations Center takes control of the satellites. Um, and that's what we saw with our earlier video, how, how the satellite's able to, um, how it's able to orbit and drop those satellites in the right place. It's absolutely incredible. Exactly. So every OneWeb launch has a theme. Uh, we haven't talked about today's, what is it? So the theme for this launch is ideas for the next generation. I love this mission patch. Yeah. At the end of the month, OneWeb will host an industry day, introducing to the global aerospace community and supply chain our plans for the next generation of OneWeb system. So we're really looking forward to this event. And it's easy to see how low Earth orbit satellite technology will help to connect people and enterprise. And that can only help drive new ideas and collaborations for the future. Yeah, well, next generation, that's a, a, a very important theme to me. So that's wonderful to be involved. Um, Maurizio, tell us about the launch location. You know, we, we know um, that it's got an amazing history. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, for OneWeb's 10th launch, we again lift off from historic Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, which lies about 2,000 kilometers southeast of Moscow. This is a legendary location, as we were referring to earlier on. That uh, was at the beginning of the space race 64 years ago, when Sputnik 1, the first man-made satellite, uh, was launched into space from this very location. And four years later, in 1961, Vostok 1, the first human space flight with the cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin also made history from Baikonur. Today, it's a modern launch site for all types of commercial space activities, and it's OneWeb's fourth launch from here. How incredible to be following in that history. It's, it's amazing. So, as the next stage of the mission continues, let's take a look at how high-speed, low-latency connectivity can benefit the business sector. Fiber-like connectivity will be very, very helpful at sea, enabling shipping fleets and offshore operations to be more efficient, sustainable and profitable. OneWeb hosted a maritime talk show at the recent London International Shipping Week. So let's hear from futurist KD Adamson about the challenges for the shipping industry. I'm KD Adamson and I'm delighted to be joining the OneWeb team here at London International Shipping Week. Shipping leaders are already grappling with lack of regulatory certainty, misaligned incentives, the risk of stranded assets and the absence of clear decarbonisation technology solutions. But underlying all of these things is a deceptively simple question. How will we create value in the future? As the world enters an era of radical transparency, company value creation will increasingly be linked to our capability to accurately measure and report a wide range of novel metrics, which means both the volume and the quality of the data we collect today will need to improve by several magnitudes, together with a sweeping reassessment of what constitutes relevance and priority. Using the technologies around us to connect and reimagine new collaborative data ecosystems will enable shipping to start reframing the challenges it faces, secure the industry's license to operate, and grasp the emerging opportunities on the horizon. And that is where we're going to leave the mission for tonight. A huge thank you to Maurizio, to Vincent, to Stefan and the entire team at OneWeb and Ariane Spass for allowing us to join them live for the launch. It has been brilliant to see another step in the OneWeb mission plan and to learn so much about what their satellite constellation up there will bring us down here on Earth. What OneWeb is doing today is really going to help connect people, ideas and innovation in the very near future. 
This mission takes an incredible amount of teamwork and collaboration, and it's so impressive to see how this dream comes together. And it won't be long until we can do it all again. So look out for an announcement very soon with the details of Launch 11. You can follow this mission's progress across the OneWeb social media channels. But that's all from me. It has been a genuine pleasure to host tonight's launch. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>